Hooray! Hooray! Hey, dudes, how are you doing? You well? Yes. I'm 29. I'm in my mid 20s. And uh, no, I'm <laughs> definitely in my mid 20s. But my face hasn't really caught up. I've got quite, uh, I'm not a particularly manly man. There are a few guys here with kind of cool stubble. That's what I'd like, because that's the ultimate manly face. You know, it's kind of saying, well, uh, I could grow a beard, but I can't be bothered, yeah? Because I'm too busy doing it with hot babes. <laughs> and, um, but I've got this awkward thing whereby if I shave, I look 12. And if I don't, I look like a French exchange student. <laughs> Very awkward, kind of, to straddle those two things. And uh, a bit of a sad year, actually. My girlfriend uh, did leave me earlier this year. Well, that's very kind of you to say, ah, but do bear in mind, I haven't told you what I did to her yet. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So I said to my friend, I said, hey, man, I totes need to meet a new GF ASAP. I did, I did. And, and he said, talk properly. Uh, <laughs> No, he didn't. He said, what you need to do is go to the nightclub, John, because that's where women live. Uh, it's, no, it's true, it's true. Uh, I've now been there. That's where women live. I know quite a lot about women. They live there. And um, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's a bit like in a wildlife documentary. Um, often, to kind of protect themselves, the women will sort of dance in very tightly knit circular packs, right? And um, the reason is, it's very clever, it's very clever. The reason is that there is no dance on earth that is available to men to kind of give them access <laughs> to that group of women without getting sort of spat back out again. So what you have to do, like in the wildlife documentaries, right, they're like a kind of a group of gazelles. And you have to use a counter tactic like the lion of the plains. And slowly, surely, strategically, <laughs> dance away the weakest member of the group. <laughs> you kind of separate her from the rest of the herd. And then you dance her into a corner where you can kind of prey upon her, right? <laughs> but I mean, I'm not, I'm not like picky. A lot of men have criteria uh, for ladies. They'll say things like, oh, I like a woman with big breasts, or I like a woman with long legs. For me, as long as the legs are both long or both short, <laughs> not a problem. It's the mishmash of long and short legs. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen, right? So what you have to do when you've got your lady is you have to use dances to impress them, right? Now, um, I've got three dances, ladies and G's. Um, <laughs> but before I show them to you, right, it's very important, is that I must point out that our public liability insurance here does not cover blown minds. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So, strap in. Dance number one is called The Thrust. <laughs> and it goes a something like this. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hang on, John. Surely that works first time every time. <laughs> no, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I have to go up to dance number two, dudes, which is called the march. And that goes uh, something <laughs> like this. <laughs> now, you know what you're thinking now? You're thinking, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That first dance changed our lives. <laughs> second dance was a bit boring, really, to, and we thought they would get progressively more mind-blowing. And to those critics, I say, boring, is it? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's right, side to side and backwards. <laughs> now, if those two haven't worked, it's very rare, it's very rare that those two won't work in conjunction. But if I get up to the third, obviously, of those, obs, a circle <laughs> will have formed around me, right? <laughs> and, uh, everyone in the nightclub will kind of be, be there going like this. Uh, some of them will be filming it on their iPhones to put up on YouTube. Uh, and what I'll do in that situation is I'll just slowly, I'll take that tension, I'll just slowly 
slowly start to crouch. People are like, what the heck has this guy got left in his locker? We thought his locker was bare. There's two guys up in the lighting gantry. One says to the other, where's the dancing rule book? It's being rewritten. <laughs> and then I'll unleash it. It's a star jump. <laughs> star jump thank you. Very kind. Now, another reason I feel like I'm getting a bit older is because I'm starting to get really stressed out by noisy neighbours, right? Uh, we've got real tr troubles with noisy neighbours. And I'll tell you what happened. It's the first time I've ever done something properly brave, right? I was in my flat Sunday night, just got back from a gig. It's about 11 o'clock. And the, the noise was, you know when you can tell it's coming through a wall or through the floor, but this was like out in the wild. It was kind of coming from everywhere. I was thinking, what the dickens is going on here? I, I did, I nearly lost it. I did, oh, what? It's terrible, right? So I opened up my kitchen window, and our window looks out onto our garden, which then backs onto the neighbour's garden. There's their house, right? And I can see in their garden the remnants of a barbecue, right? Now, usually, people would have a barbecue things like burgers and sausages. But unfortunately, these cheeky tinkers seem to have been eating chicken drum and bass sticks. <laughs> and wait for it. R and beans on toast. <laughs> and so I thought, I'm not blooming having it. I did. I nearly lost it. I thought, I'm not blooming having it. And um, but I thought, it's only 11. It's only 11s. So uh, what I do. <laughs> so I thought, what I'll do is I'll go into the other room where it's not so bad. I'll have a bottle of rose, a couple of whiskies, and see what happens, right? And while I'm watching the film in the other room with my rose and my whiskies, I check the Bristol City Council website guide for how to deal with noisy neighbours, right? <laughs> I can now confirm your suspicions that it does not say, have a bottle of rosé <laughs> and a couple of whiskies and see what happens, right? <laughs> it says, go round in person if you feel safe enough, be calm, be, be, be confident, apologise even for interrupting their night. So I go back into the kitchen. I open up the window and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just going to turn up and be like, hey, dudes, we all like a party, don't we? But come on, do a little bit. And, <laughs> and as I'm lifting up the window, the music goes up another level, right? Now, at this point, I flip, right? And I don't flip very often, I'm more of a flopper. And, <laughs> For some reason, I grab the empty bottle of rosé and chuck it out of the window and it smashes in their garden, right? Now, part of me thinks, hooray! Another part of me thinks, hide! Right, so I don't do this. And it strikes me what a bizarre thing to do to deal with broken Britain by chucking a bottle at it, right? <laughs> Albeit a bottle of rosé. It's kind of the best middle-class crime in the world, you know. What next? Artichokes down the chimney, hummus through the letterbox. So, <laughs> I thought, well, this is silly. I've got to sort this, right? So I, what I do is I go out of my house and go round onto their street. Now, when I'm on their street, I realise that it's not that house. I have just thrown a bottle of rosé into an innocent party's garden, right? It's the house opposite them. Now, that's two streets away. The sight that meets my eyes, you wouldn't believe. There are young lads and lasses on the streets drinking tins of beer. And I, they were. And, um, <laughs> and smoking jazz cigarettes like there's no tomorrow. And they've got a bay window, right, on the first floor. We haven't got bloody bay windows. And uh, they've got the windows open, big PA speakers pointing out of the windows onto the streets, right? And it just makes me so angry, angry enough to do something silly, right? And I think, right, I'm going to clean up the streets, you know? <laughs> so I see the door open into the house, so I think, oh, you've come this far. So I go into the house. I've not been invited, not on Facebook or anything, right? And I, <laughs> I go up the stairs, and I'm kind of... No one minds that I'm there, because they're all bonging it. Uh, <laughs> and um, I go into the main room where it's all kicking off, and they've got two PA speakers, about 60 people, all kind of... Uh, well, I don't, they weren't doing this, but, you know... <laughs> doing whatever it is you do to drum and bass music, and they've got the decks in the middle. Now, I think there's clearly no way that I can find out who's in charge here and tell them to turn it down. And at this moment, I see the plug connecting the four-way adapter to the speakers and the decks. And I think, 
six more yards. And I walk through these people. I grab the plug, pull it out of the wall, and immediately the music stops. And then all the adrenaline drains out of my body. <laughs> and I realize I'm stood in a room full of people, all looking at me with eyes that are essentially saying, WT fuck. <laughs> guy fronts up to me, right, and he says, what the heck do you think you're doing, sunshine? Or words to that effect, right? <laughs> now, when I get angry, I don't get grrr angry, I get shrill like a lady. <laughs> so he says, what the heck do you think you're doing, sunshine? I say, I don't live next door. <laughs> I live two streets away. would also see my tone as Michael McIntyre when I get angry. <laughs> and he then says to me, chill out, mate. We finished our finals today. It's just a party. Now, at this point, I say something I'd not planned on saying, right? I look him dead in the eyes and I say, oh, this is not a party. This is a prick factory. <laughs> And you, sir, are the CEO. <laughs> now, I don't know if you've ever accused anyone of being the chief executive officer of a prick factory, right? <laughs> don't take very kindly to it. He heard the key word and went, don't you call me a prick. I actually had to back down from an angry mob saying, whoa, 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 there's been some confusion. I didn't call you a prick. I called you the CEO of a prick factory. <laughs> Uh, eventually, it, it calmed down when the girl who owned the house came to turn the music down. But then I found out her name was India, which made me hate her even more. Um, <laughs> well, well, no, not, not in a racist way, just because it's a silly name. Um, <laughs> I'll leave you with one thing. Um, me and Russ, when we lived together, we lived in Bristol, and it's an amazing place, as I'm sure you'll know if you've ever been there. Uh, what I miss most about it when I'm away is the sort of things Bristolians say. And I was away for a month at the Edinburgh Festival. And coming back in on the plane, what I wanted more than anything else was to hear someone say something properly mental. I had to wait 12 yards from the arrivals desk, right? I come out. There's two young lads there, about 14 years old, max. And they're obviously going on some kind of sporting trip because they're stood there with their kit bags and their uniform and their little initials on. And, um, and they're excited in a good way, not in a stabby crack way. No, in, you only see a scout just looking at a hill, just kind of vibrating with anticipation. And you think, oh, that's what's right with the world. And then you see the scout leader and you think, hmm. <laughs> That's what's wrong with the world. <laughs> and one of them turned to his mate and he went, Here, Darren, I hope you're not lactose intolerant. <laughs> I thought, That's very strange. What's he going to follow this up with? He said, I hope you're not lactose intolerant because Corfu is going to be legendary. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been absolutely smashing. I've been John Robbins. Bye-bye.